This is Talks with Petri Saw, and today's guest, we have Sami Benskron. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. What changes when you have raised over 20 million euros in funding versus bootstrapping? What chances? Ah, that's, a, that's a good question. You know, you're putting me on the spot right at the beginning here. <laughs> that's the point. <laughs> <laughs> that's the point. Wonderful. Well, uh, you know, if you want to see, if you want to hear about probability of success, I, uh, I would say that uh, I, I cannot give you really an answer. Uh, what I would say, though, is that bootstrapping definitely, you know, makes you think, think hard about where to put your money and where to invest. Versus if you get 20 million in funding, uh, your thought process and you, you know, the way you are thinking is a little bit different. It, it uh, makes you thinking, um, in my experience at least, much bigger and much, you know, much, much further, right? So, you're, you know, the, the horizon that you're looking at is, is, is much further in the future. So I would say, you know, that is the major difference. What is better? I, uh, there's, there's, uh, you know, there's a reason for both ways. I would say, you know, to 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 just make a very diplomatic answer here. <laughs> well, we don't need to be diplomatic. You also, <laughs> I don't know. It, it felt to me that you almost made it to sound like that. It's like a dessert option. That do I go for the mud cake or do I take espresso? But I, I guess it doesn't really happen that way. No, it doesn't. You know, so in in my experience, right? We've we 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 have almost experienced two, you know, both ways. In, um, in in the company that, that I founded and uh, there, there there was a time when bootstrapping was really the the, the way to go and and to prove the model and, and to really understand you know what are we going to do what are we what do we need to prove almost and then there was a time when we needed venture capital because it was exactly the you know the type of growth that we could achieve and that we couldn't and you know go go after so bootstrapping versus venture capital is almost not the choice i think there's a time for both of it and then it's it's both is a valid uh, a valid option and and or you know valid paths if you will so uh you know you you'll you, yeah i it's there is a time for both i think that's the that's the that's the answer can you run through quickly or just a bit for the audience as well? What do you do? How did you get here? And, and I guess you didn't start with the VC. You did a bit of bootstrapping in the beginning. Exactly. Well, I, th I think my, my first, you know, if, if uh, there's these, 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 sorry for my English, these fuck up shows, right? <laughs> Where you talk about <laughs> what didn't really go well. I hope you can beep it out. <laughs> uh, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> we're speaking French here. <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. So, so I think I think I've had a lot of that in, in in the very early, early, early years. So a lot of learnings, a lot of things that really didn't go didn't go well. Um, but just in a, in a nutshell, right? So you know, I've I've started right after the after the U uni um, to to build the company that that uh, is now called Morissier. And throughout the path, you know, we have stopped, we have started, we have created some other paths in between. Um, so it was a you know, kind of that that tree path, right? There, there's there's you know one way, and then there is these little uh, uh, you know ways right and left, and then we've went through all of them and really found out that there's some 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 paths that uh, have a natural stop it that don't go really further. Um, so so the the company that that we're doing now is 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 in in the area of scientific uh, communication, scholarly communication, right? So we are um, making early stage research, um, very early. Uh, um, um, scientific results accessible um, that would typically be presented on academic and scientific conferences. Right? It's a it's a world that is completely offline. On you know, and and in, in the last year things changed, but we'll go uh, deeper down. I'm I'm, I'm sure. Um, so 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 the, the the path that we took, I think it was now six or seven years ago, was we observed that on conferences the way relevant scientific research cancer research you know all the relevant research is communi communicated on paper right so <laughs> scientists from all around the world printing physical posters li literally printing through an old school printer uh, and and putting it with uh, with scotch tape on the wall that um, sounds like my school days you know arts and craft 
<laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. But instead of beautiful pictures, that's literally how to, you know, how to cure, uh, you know, those, those, those crazy diseases or even in other fields, right? How to do innovation, right? Rocket science is just to, to get, get one example. Um, um, you would communicate that on 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 paper, right? Uh, uh, or on a on a PowerPoint presentation where you bring the USB key, plug it into a computer, present it, take it away again, and 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 get and go off. So I think we are not too far off from these overhead projectors. Do you remember those overhead? Yeah, I know. Right? I, I actually even I'm I'm that old. I even used them. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. You know, I, I in in my school times they stood in every corner, and we also sometimes used them, right, with these long foils where you would write down and essentially the idea of a powerpoint is the same right it's just one idea after the other so nothing really revolutionary on a powerpoint um, so this is the way scientific information is being communicated on, on either on paper or on an on a thing that is very close to an overhead projector which uh, you know puts a lot of problems into in, into that world so one just you know one one big problem is accessibility, right? So that's a huge one. Can you, you have it just for those people that are either in the room or that can afford to go to a conference? Um, and and this is what we observed very early on, and we saw who are that, we? We, yeah, that's a good that's a good one. So we are three co-founders. Uh, it's my you know my best friend uh, um, Justus um, um, and um, uh, uh, Reno who. Uh, who we met in the startup ecosystem here in here in Berlin, uh, who has a um, who has done great great work at IM, which is a, um, a really great company here here out of Berlin, and, and we we came together to you know to build what what is now Mauricier. So it's three uh, three co-founders, um, and uh, you know. So are you the only science nerd, or or all of you guys went just for the Friday evening to just you know geek out? <laughs> Yeah, well, sometimes I would like to do that, right? So sometimes I would like to just say, "Hey, I'm actually the science nerd, right? I did rocket science. I did, I did all of that." And the the, the blunt reality, I'm I'm just not, right? I'm just a very boring business student uh, that uh, you know studied at 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 a, at a French, even French business. You know, French is second time we talk about France, yeah. Um, a French business uh, business student um, that just by I would say bio, bio, biographical accidents, I would call it, came into this world uh, of, of scholarly research. Uh, so that's that's the path. And Justus is, and then Reno, we, we, the three of us, we are not scholars. And quite frankly, I think that enabled us to first of all be as stubborn as we have been in the very early days to just crack this huge problem. Um, and second of all, I think that's even more important, we were very naive. There. Yeah, I was actually even starting to think, that, was it actually a problem or was it just, the, you know, you thought that there was a problem. Yeah. The other guys were like perfectly happy to just do PowerPoints. No, it's a good, it's a good point. It's a good point. And I think that this is one of the biggest learnings that we have, we have went through, right? So, you know, the, the, this entire notion of product market fit that, that you're, um, you know, that you're alluding to is, 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 is something that, that, uh, you know, we, we, we thought about a lot in, in the very beginning. It is just a nice to have, you know, what is what is the purpose of the of the company? What you know, what are we gonna do? What is it, what is this, right? And 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 it, it fits perfectly to what we've started to talk about when it comes to bootstrapping versus venture capital backed companies, right? In the very early days when we when we did a little bit of a trial and error and we we created a product that would be nice to have right it was just nice to have perfectly um then bootstrapping was exactly the way to go about it right get the first client um you know learn sell it and see see how so it works what, what was the first prototype or the first mvp oh it was a crappy product holy crap <laughs> there were a lot of stories oh boy now now it all comes up you know memory lane where we're on um I, I think in the, the story of the first client was it, it 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 was a conference that took place in 2014. It was before we actually founded the company, um, and uh, the 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 three of us we have uh, successfully sold 
an idea of a product um, and that idea of a product would basically digitize these uh, posters and would make them display on an iPad app, right? So, so you were scanning uh, them. Well, we were actually, we had the PDFs. So people were sending us via mail the PDFs. We were putting all the PDFs onto the, onto the, onto the iPad, connected the iPad with a large screen so that you had the experience of a big poster, uh, but you could interact with it on the iPad, right? So that was the innovation to say, well, you know, we will bring those paper posters into the, into the modern area, you could inter integrate videos, interactive graphs, uh, links, and so on and so forth. So it was a step up. People didn't really use it, <laughs> but uh, just the idea <laughs> of enabling videos and so on was quite nice, right? And that product that we have sold them, um, the day before the first day of that, confer of that first conference, nothing was stable, everything just, fell apart. These, you know, PDF wouldn't render properly. The videos wouldn't really, you know, <laughs> work from those two or three posters. Um, <laughs> and I still remember, I still remember there was a, there was a hotel next to that conference venue where, where we needed to bring one of the screens into the hotel rooms, uh, uh, you know, put the iPad to it. And then we, our engineer, who was you know, one engineer, <laughs> coded the entire night to just try to make things happen so that uh, nothing <laughs> Would break so it was two non-tech people one uh, one engineer you know the two non-tech watching you know is it gonna work is it gonna work all night long <laughs> providing red bull and coca-cola so we, <laughs> we we were we were basically hacking throughout the night and then the next day uh, obviously nothing really worked properly so what we did the three of us completely tired we didn't sleep at all uh, we're basically guess. Let me guess. You ran into a print shop and did the, you know, the good old-fashioned posters. <laughs> well, at least that was a backup option. I think we didn't have that in mind back then. Uh, we really, really want to make it happen. So we stood next to and there we had 15 screens with iPads connected. So the three of us, we were in that room and jumping from screen to screen to basically support everybody that would use the iPads uh, so that the app wouldn't crash because we know exactly what uh, needed to be done in order to... Uh, so, you know, I think that was the first experience of, of us creating the company um, uh, with, with a lot of learnings that came after. <laughs> So what happened next? Uh, sounds like that this is the you know the exciting and fun part of the story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, <laughs> you know when I'm I'm, I'm thinking and, and and seeing ourselves in in that hotel room, it you know I'm starting to sweat again. It was it was a lot of pressure because quite frankly we were able to actually sell it for a decent amount, right? So the the the, the value that it provided retrospectively, you know was quite big so uh just to give put put that in into perspective you know i, I talked about it in a, in a funny way but you know we managed to put um 1500 posters that uh, needed to be displayed in an entire you know hall uh, a huge hall in a much smaller uh, room with these 15 screens and suddenly people were interacting much better in front of these screens were asking you know questions the dialogue sparked suddenly so you know while being there and while being all stressed down and all being oh, wow is it really the the, the path that we want to go we realized that the value of what we have created there was actually much bigger than we initially anticipated. So the the, the learning l led us, let you know, brought us to one idea after another. And you know, we we've obviously made the first version a little bit more stable. We got more clients based on that case study. We've sold you know to to, to more conferences, and it was a nice path, right? So we've had two three partners that very closely supported us also on that you know providing those screens and 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 the iPads because we didn't want to do anything with hardware we were always you know very focused on the software and slowly we began to realize that there is a very good uh, path that uh, could scale right and 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 the path that we have discovered there is the data right uh, the the documents and the data that we would collect it, 
that's very relevant, uh, very relevant to a lot of people out there. Um, not only the research community, not only researchers around the world, um, but also suddenly we got calls and, and emails from pharma companies that were saying, hey, didn't you digitize these, 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 these posters? You know, we would love to get access to it. We, we need them for our research. So, you know, by accident almost, we stumbled into this world uh, of, oh, oh, wow, it's much bigger than just putting a paper I I into an iPad and, and uh, make a little bit of, of, of zoom and pinch to zoom. But there is a whole world that emerged out of that. And, um, and, and that world is, is, is what we now, you know, work on at, at Mauricier. Um, and that's, uh, you know, where, where we started and where we, where we now raised over, I think, 26 million in, in, in venture funding. Um, um, and, uh, and, you know, the, the way proved us right in, in a sense. Did that insight come from you, from the founders, just observing what was happening or was it actually coming from the market, like the farmers calling you and asking for the data? Yeah, I, I think it was, it, it was a little bit of both, right? So obviously it, it, um, it, it, you know, I, I didn't sit in, in, in the, in the dark room and, you know, what am I going to, you know, how am I going to change the world? <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, it wasn't that. I, I think it was, it, it was a connection of very uh, in, in, interesting, uh, um, serendipitous moments that happened. Um, so we've created these, these, these moments almost as a founding team. Um, and we've created, let's say that platform in order for the, the market reaction to come, right? And and that's my firm belief to say, you know, it's you, you're not going to change anything while sitting in a room and just thinking uh, <laughs> what what's going to be big, but but really putting yourself in those in those situations. And 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 when it comes to, I I I, I don't like the word innovation because it's but you know, it, let's call it creativity, right? If you want to have that creative. Um, mindset i think you need to put yourself in situation where it can happen right and and you need to be open for these so 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 that's that's how it led to to where we are now um, and and where where the market reacted as it reacted so you in the beginning you were just basically doing bootstrapping with revenues uh when did you start to take some uh, external funding mm -hmm. and and i think there was some pivots also in, oh yeah in, somewhere along the way so it wasn't like a usually afterwards and uh, more more time goes you know it's more like uh, you know from a to b and you know <laughs> straight no, straight yeah, into exactly. success story <laughs> no it's 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 from a to from a to g and then you just switch the the, the letter system and then you come back and you know that, that's somehow how it goes and there was yeah. also uh, I, I think there was at least one uh trip to Ireland as well. Was that the detour? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There, there's a lot of questions in here, but uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to put uh, one after the other. <laughs> oh, Ireland. Yes. Uh, so, so, so the detour, right? So when we've started and, you know, after that conference that I've, I've talked about, um, after that, we have done maybe you know, 10 or 15 or 20 more conferences and, and it, and it led us to profitability, which is, which is, which is quite, uh, which is quite interesting. How quickly did that happen within a year or two of the Yeah, it was, a, it was a year, it was a year or a year, maybe one and a half. So, you know, we, we had a small operation. We were just three or well, I think we got, we got two interns. We, we were five, um, um, and, and it, it was, it was enough, right? I was selling. Um, uh, selling my, my co-founders, you know, built the product and did the on customer onboarding and and so on. It worked quite nicely. Customers were were very happy and 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 you know we we took some 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 very small uh, um, salary at the very beginning and we got uh, a little bit of state funding as well. But uh, after one one and a half years, we we were profitable for the first time, which is quite interesting. And and I think that was the moment when. When, you know, we were talking about those systems, right? We jumped ahead. <laughs> and that was the moment when we started to understand that there is a world um, of venture funding, or at least, you know, that there's there's a different path uh, of the one that we took. Because we were very, you know, we, we started it off without thinking about it. And we just wanted to do something. 
Um, and, uh, and, and, and that's where the trip to Ireland came actually into play. All right. So, <laughs> so you went so, to the toilet. <laughs> we <see. laughs> so we were, you know, we were, we were proud, right? We saw, well, we've built a profitable company, right? We, we are there, we have 15 clients. We, you know, we have, we digitized posters, right? It's nice. That's big. That was our world. And, and we said, all right, you know what? We've heard of that conference uh, happening every year in Ireland, uh, which is called Web Summit. Um, back then, I think it wasn't too well known. Um, so what we did is we said, because our product consists out of the screen and the hardware stuff and the software, we needed to bring everything to Ireland. So we took a bus, uh, you know, these, bus. These, these, yeah, these, <laughs> you, these, these Volkswagen, you know, oh, yeah, buses, vans, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The vans. Yeah. Uh, um, and we put I thought you were just basically it. taking it as a regular, you know, commercial, <laughs> no service bus. <laughs> so would, hey, can, can, can you guys take our screen as well? <laughs> no, we, we took a, we took that van, yeah. And, uh, and we drove from Berlin to, um, to Dublin. Uh, which is obviously interesting because you need to you know, take twice the ferry, uh, which is an interesting, interesting experience. So we slept in the car. You know, it was uh, I think one and a half day drive or so, um, uh, ch changing back and back and forth. Um, with but with that clear mission and that big hope that in on Web Summit we'll find uh, the VC that will fund us and that will you know for whatever we wanted to do i think it wasn't clear at all and and when when we arrived in 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 dublin and put our screen up and uh, we had the first conversation we very quickly realized the the ideas that we had and and the and the expectations that we had uh, and on the other hand the reality it didn't match at at all at all we didn't know we didn't know how to answer all of those questions and, and it was frustrating quite frankly so your poster uh, I, didn't work it didn't, it didn't. so the poster was displayed very nicely but when i talked with all my excitement hey hey vc look at this we can digitize poster and it's big you know go look at that um nobody really got that fire and uh, oh, obviously it's i uh, there, there, there was no storyline. There was no business case. There was no, you know, real. Uh, you know, it was a little bit of a stretch. Or not, not even a little bit. I, I'm realizing that I'm never, I, I never talked about that in in that detail as 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 with you now. Yeah, here we go. So uh, I think that this was the first realization, and th this was the moment when we started to think. Oh, you know, it seems like we have two choices, right? The choice number one was we'll build you know we'll go further to conference organizer in order to sell our hardware you know ipad poster solution uh, or way number two we will think different and scale the business and want and create a big business based on venture funding and uh, and and much faster growth and i would say that that it was a time when we did uh, we needed to rethink completely and need to learn again right so I, I would even uh, now say that there are these three times in, in, in the building of the company. One was that bootstrapping time. The second period came right after Dublin, after driving with a with a van and sleeping in that van uh, <laughs> on, on ferries. By the way, when we when we went back, there was a huge storm, <laughs> and, and the, the the ship was. And that was a scary situation now that I'm thinking back of it. I have we a similar story. <laughs> this goes back in the 90s. I was studying in the UK and, and we were, you know, going from England to, to UK Ireland for just for the holiday. I think we were coming back and, you know, handing our tickets and we were asking because it was the weather was not good. So it was like, yeah. how is the weather? And, and, and the person from the ticket, you know, uh, both are saying, well, have you seen Titanic? <laughs> and, and you know, yeah. Well, it wasn't even stormy. Was the rest. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, you got you you got that feeling, right? You, it's that that slight salt on on your lips, right? Because the wind is so crazy going against you, and that you you cannot really sit straight, and you see already those bottles of 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 those whiskey bottles in the bar falling down you know that that was exactly it so i'm still hearing those it was absolutely crazy <laughs> middle of the night Whew. yeah well 
it almost is that that was the kind of the bell when when things changed, right? That was the second period, and, and that second period I would I would consider a lot of failing, and that was all pre twenty seventeen, by the way, um, pre seven. So I would say it was kind of the years between two fifteen to two seventeen, those one two years, where we've even started a second company that would um, you know that 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 uh, was our first try to build a venture backed business which also miserably failed we've put a lot of m money in there and, and and lost it all and the idea came a little bit through 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 that poster um uh, concept to to say how can we facilitate researchers to create posters well let them you know, let's give them a, a tool an app where you would throw a lot of <laughs> things together a lot of pictures videos and and and, and text and it creates kind of a poster builder I can almost hear like that. Damn, you know these PDFs. It's it's a mess. You know the sta the standard of PDF is not really a standard. You know it, it always crashes our app. <laughs> what about if we actually just make the you know the tool you know which doesn't crash our app? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. You you got it. You, you you're spot on. That that was the and 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 additionally, what we thought is. And we could scale it much faster. We don't need hardware. We could just distribute it to researchers and so on. It obviously didn't work because uh, researchers and scientists, they, um, let's say, have their way on how to put posters together. And they, and they, they have their, their process. And, and changing habits um, uh, for researchers and scientists is I guess for everybody in the world is, is, is tough. And especially in that field um, is, 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 is even harder. So, so what we did is we tried very quickly to say, well, this could be a perfect uh, uh, thing for fashion. This could be fashion. a perfect fashion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We thought about fashion. We now thought, we're going we into France fashion. again, are we? Or, or Milan? Yeah, 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 yeah. We are. It's, <laughs> it's immediate. It's, it, it's right there, right there. Well, we thought, you know, where we, we wanted to create, you know, the, this this PDF builder or these these beautiful poster builder should have an aesthetic appearance. So. We were thinking, well, where do you need aesthetic? Uh, and and fashion was 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 the thing. And you know, I'm I'm a little interested in fashion. Let's put it this way. So it was an it was a natural way to to, to just experiment. No, so we, I'm uh, just wondering what were you were smoking in Berlin at the time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see the connection so clearly. It clear sounds that I could. Yeah, it <laughs> makes sense in my brain. <laughs> what <do> you know. <laughs> So, so it, it made a lot of it made a lot of sense, but obviously it 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 it, it, it very much didn't. Um, so yet another learning, right? We 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 obviously miserably failed. Nobody wanted to wanted wanted to use it. I, we never had that you know social media idea in 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 mind, right? Because you you, need, you needed to scale back then. Um, um, uh, Instagram was 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 I, I think was already very big. Um, uh, there were more and more apps in that area that that came up, and uh, so you know, it was a nice idea. Let's put it this way, but that's it. Right? So, we, did you did you have a two companies at the same time? Was it like a subsidiary, yes. or, or no. because you said also you put some money in there, and, and was it also external funding in there? Yeah, no, it was two complete different companies, and um, we uh, we we put in kind of the friends families and fools money in, in that uh, in 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 that in that company in that second company so you know all the money that was left on on my bank account we've poured into into that that you know wasn't uh, wasn't a lot in the first place but uh, you know didn't really bring us bring us any further so after a year or one and a half year we we stopped that 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 second company because we saw that there's yeah, no fashion is too expensive better to stick to the science Better to stick to the sign. Well, yeah, it, it, it was a frustrating time. It was a very frustrating time. I didn't. Um, it, it, it was. Um, it was a frustrating time. It was a completely new team. I was in the beginning, obviously, very exciting because I had these learnings from our bootstrapping time. Um, a lot of learnings, also our our crash with uh, with our web summit experience. Uh, so there was more learnings, and and um, and it was a completely different team, right? So okay, um, so you basically almost like stopped, or did you stop the the you know after no, the we web didn't. summit, it, the it, first it, one? It, no, it, so so the the, the 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 our our initial company in, in the science world it continued right we we because we had clients we, you know, it was still profitable right okay, it was a, right. so it was running. It was a, 
it was it was just it was it was just, it was just running and no exciting things happening it was, it was just step by step very slowly very nothing nothing spectacular if you will um but solid um and 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 then the the the, the other business was you know i was very excited about it They're very naive but it, i think that um i needed this type of of excitement if you will if you come to that realization you just need something that sparks your your interest again and and it did right and after that failed and that's kind of the the second period if you will you know the 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 more recent times started right and I, so that's I didn't like add- 17 18 2000 exactly yeah since end of 17 right so almost beginning 18 to to now uh, and 17 beginning of 18 that's the time that where, where i'm still in right that's the that's the period where we've learned a lot where i grew up i you know learned much more i uh, wasn't so arrogant i wasn't so let's say stubborn with <laughs> with the, the the initial ideas that i had and um We've built the the company that we have now, Mauricier. Um, f- for me, that is the beginning of of, of that company, right? To, to seventeen, beginning to to eighteen. That's when we got the first angel funding, proper angel funding from a an absolute brilliant angel in in the industry, uh, Jan Reichelt, who who founded Mendeley, who he sold it to to Elsevier. So he 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 knew, right? He went through the entire path and and know, knew all the ups and downs. He gave me a lot of great insights. And, and how I met it was also an interesting, interesting path, right? Throughout that time of my second period, I engaged with a lot of VCs, right? I've, I, I've started to learn their language, to um, try to understand how they think, who, 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 who they are. And from that time, I've had a lot of great connections. And, and one of them told me, hey, you know, I know that guy that uh, is very familiar with the scientific space and with scholarly research, and uh, you, you should speak to him. And, and and that was, you know, day X, if you will. And, and from then on, we uh, we got great angels on board. Um, our second angel was then the CEO of The Guardian, uh, which which we were very, very you know happy to get on board. We had th- three further angels. We've got the first funding. From a VC in 2017, the second funding of a VC in 2018. We've got another funding in 2019, and um, uh, 2020 was a you know brilliant growth year for for us. Um, and the most recent funding was in the beginning of of, of this year. So you know, very typical um, growth path, if you will. Um, after a lot of <laughs> stuff happened, you know, period one and two. <laughs> so has it been like a smooth ride after the you know the third? sort of start or phase or has there been a, obviously COVID happened as well yeah smooth I wouldn't call it smooth I would oh, it call it is. more yeah, it, <laughs> it's smooth it, it definitely you know this, I'm just this checking first... you know whether you're actually telling the true story <laughs> <laughs> you know I, I laid down and everything just happened <laughs> no it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't smooth right it, 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 it the typical structure right it always took longer and uh, cost much more than than you initially thought it would um so so it, it 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 wasn't, but it was much more clearer. Let's let let's say, I think the vision that we then created, the, the, the clear you know vision statement, mission statement, really showed us the path very clearly. And uh, you know, I was always very very passionate about that. Um, and just because we had it, and because it was a very big one, that the, the market was much clearer. It went. It was more stringent, right? So still a lot of stuff, you know, we failed and we learned a lot and, um, but it was much, much clearer. So for me, uh, it helped me kind of that corridor was very clear. And within that corridor, we, you know, there was obviously a lot of ups and downs, um, but it moved quite nicely. So this was basically when the Google meets Hopin or Hopin meets Google <laughs> uh, became clear. Yes. Yeah, that that's exactly right. And and hopping back then wasn't 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 the thing. So we, uh, but it is. So the the, the mission statement that we've had is um, we want to be the platform that organizes um, scientific research um, in the from the very early stages on, um, and uh, on on a global scale. 
So we still took a lot of things from from our you know first period where we've done a lot of learning. Um, we, we've made things much clearer, and um, and, and that's where that's that's where every, everything became, you know your Google meets 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 up. <laughs> <laughs> So exactly. it starts to sound like almost like the, the those conferences and events are just like the honeypot to get to the good stuff to the data and organize it and start to sell it. And then you yeah, well, so the we, we see scientific conferences a little bit differently. For us, conferences just generally are communities that meet on a physical location and. What we never understood was why do you stop the conversation of a conference after the last, last beer at the bar of that conference and then only restart it at the first beer of the conference that would happen next year? That, that concept for us never made sense. And I wanted to, uh, to, to, to really switch it and say, why don't we create a systematic? Why don't we create a system where you had a conversation ongoingly? Why don't you have a system where you basically share preliminary results, you know, early stage ideas, um, maybe not even in the format such as a poster or a presentation, online con consistently and have these moments in between where you meet either physically that's fine. I don't have any anything against physical meeting. I think it's 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 good. It creates a different type of experience. Um, or you know you can do also fully virtual you know meetups, workshops, or so right. So I don't want to be too dogmatic about that idea of fully virtual conference or fully hybrid. I don't even want to be dogmatic about conference at all, right? Um, I think there is a reason for all types of of conferences. What I believe is that the conversation needs to happen. So conferences for us was a very, very good entry point into that world because they had a lot of challenges. You had a lot of offline elements. You had a lot of things to improve. Um, and uh, yeah, and, and I think also, you know, when you look in 2020, that there, there was almost a, a big realization happening um, that uh, you've got to do something around it. And uh, and that's what happened, right? And, and uh, that, that's where we got. So I, I wouldn't call it a honeypot or, or even a, you know, almost you know, negatively speaking, a Trojan horse. We want to really integrate what happens on the conference into a much bigger system. And I don't want to see a conference just separate to, to everything else. So for me, it's about the connection it's about the community it's about bringing people together bringing content together making you know this world where 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 scientists exchange much freer and 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 and, and really enable everything and and just maybe another anecdote I, I think one of the reasons i strongly believe in that is is i um i was born and raised in in, in berlin by by a, a polish mother and and a, and a Moroccan father. So you know that that idea of coming from from worlds that do not have full access to a huge scholarly library, you know, is, is stay, stays in stays in in my head. And I really want to want to go down that uh, down that route to to really enable everybody to have access to everything at every time. I'm curious to hear who is actually the customer uh, because. Uh, just what you described. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that it's the actual question you, you you're solving, like uh, how do I find or discover early stage research? Yeah. So our customer is the, is the societies and the institutions in that world, right? So it's academic societies such as you know the the the, the World Cancer Organization. Um, uh, these are our clients. And the reason for uh, for that, or the reason you know we 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 chose that that entry point is that they are the quality owner of their dedicated fields, um, and I strongly believe in a system where uh, scientific, let's say, uh, you know, processes or outcomes 
are at least vetted in, in, a, in a proper way, right? So I, I think it can be very dangerous and that's a whole new <laughs> topic that you know, we'll, we'll need more, more hours <laughs> for that. Yeah, I'm know. not sure Day we're two, going to the two. political <laughs> side. Let's stick to the French side better. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> we will see, you know. Maybe you reschedule your next meeting, then we can go on and this is like a bonus session. <laughs> I, I need a little bit of a darker background then, a little bit more mysterious, I guess. <laughs> so 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 yeah, so so the, 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 the societies and the institutions are really our main entry point, right? So um they have um they they the, their responsibility is to manage their members. Their responsibility is to basically foster the the scholarly uh, scholarly research process and and really engage the community and so far these academic societies and and and, and associations they you know the, the, there wasn't too many innovation on the technical side happening in that in that area i would just very carefully say um and uh, i think we were or we are still one of the only ones that with you know that fresh venture backed um software driven zas driven mentality that enter that society and, and, and association market and and really shape it properly um uh, for good um and and that's something unique right i'm i'm thinking about that on go ongoing but our market that we're acting in there is not you know thousand delivery services or you know scooter so it's it's just not not that 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 type of market so you know we are quite a unique player in in there um and same goes for universities and institutions right there's a lot of research happening on universities there's a lot of people at universities so the same same goes 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 uh, goes goes there um but then again you have also large corporates right large pharmaceutical companies or r&d heavy companies that in a sense go after the same uh, you know idea process right you have a lot of research that happens so it needs to have a home there is a lot of researchers that need a home so you have suddenly these three areas societies institutions uh, societies associations institutions and universities and corporates who all have a very 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 similar uh, challenge and a very similar problem and we are exactly solving their um their, their 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 issues and by doing so bringing the entire communities um together on one platform uh, and and that's what we are working on that sounds so lovely and great and and actually it is but i'm just thinking how you make money because there's so many stakeholders and and there's obviously the researcher who should at least uh, hopefully own the you know the research they're doing and then there's the organization they they belong maybe just temporarily or, or in a permanent basis so so there's and, and the budget may come some um, somewhere else so that that's it's not the easiest market to target yes no so that that's definitely true so it and then i would split your question in two there is obviously the The, the you know the 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 element of 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 um, market size right and then there is the element of of entry into the market um so when when it comes to market size i'm just going to give you a couple of, of of numbers i think they 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 always make sense so if you if you if you look into the world of societies and associations um you will have associations and societies for literally everything i was absolutely amazed by the you know, sheer diversity and and, and 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 size of 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 that of that market you would have for everything right for your left eye and then you know just some part illnesses in in there you would have uh, societies for just your little little finger on your on your right hand you would have all of these sub 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 societies and then you have societies for every country in the world you would have societies on an international level you have all those different different uh, different societies so there's just a huge amount of societies around the world um with all the same problems then you have roughly 17000 universities around the globe that all have the same problem and then you have that huge amount of uh, r&d heavy and uh, r&d heavy industry and, and and pharmaceutical market so just by the numbers it's a, it's a, it's a massive massive uh, um massive crowd that we uh, we we are supporting here and when it comes to the entry point you are right that our sales cycles are a little bit longer um um and and the reason for that is 
you know the, the the processes are a little bit more bureaucratic, and the you know the the entry points. You, you, we basically now I can educate. hear your pretty education there. You know the understatement in the little bureaucratic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm not going to go down that path. You know, we can talk political. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now we found the limit. <laughs> now we're hitting the money money there, stream. You know, <laughs> this was the revenue question. <laughs> All right, can we stop here now? Can we? <laughs> Where's the stop button? No. So, uh, so, so the entry point is is um, it is it is a it is a it is a process, but. Um, you would wonder how how large ticket sizes ticket sizes are that we are, that we are looking at, right? So since the, these are there is a lot of you know documents that we process. There is a lot of um, things that we do in the background. There is a lot of analysis that we do. Um, you know the the the, the 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 sizes of our of of, of our accounts are you know are, are significant, right? And and the value that we are providing is is massive. You know um, societies that. Uh, struggled a lot in 2020 because they suddenly didn't have any revenue stream through the conferences or they struggled a lot because um, their clients, which are typically institutions, also didn't have too much money. We suddenly brought them a foundation where they could earn money, right? So, um, and we only took a very, very small chunk um, um, for, to, you know, to, to cover our own cost. And uh, so it's, it's, it's basically for, for us, we, we're creating new revenue streams for these societies and associations and institutions. So even though that the, the process to go into is a little bit harder, the way our business works is that we are always making sure that our clients are very much benefiting from the services that we are using and getting their own revenues cleared up there they are you know uh, having a good 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 stream of, of of money coming in so yeah it sounds like you're becoming like ai company and i heard they they're making ice cream next to you <laughs> very good <laughs> yeah ice cream project ice cream so AI, yes. Uh, They're making Matrix we, Four, you know, in, in the next building there. That's the what he building. told me before we went live. So that's that the is, reference. That is true. Yeah, yeah. That is Google true. the ice cream, and you figure out Matrix Four. Project ice cream, exactly. Project ice cream. So we we and it was an, it was a fun connection, right? That 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 uh, you know yet another yet another yet another connection. So in the beginning of 2020 in January, I was in San Francisco for a couple of conferences where I spoke, uh, by the way, about about hybrid meetings, right? In January 2020 and in March 2020, uh, things went down south for the conference industry. Here you go. Maybe Here we go. the Neo. Here, I'm, I'm the Neo. <laughs> I'm the Neo. I saw the glitch in the Matrix <laughs> already in, in January. <laughs> and, and, and I saw how they produced the Matrix in San Francisco. So when I came back to uh, to, to Berlin, I, I suddenly discovered this little, uh, you know, th th this little paper on the on on the on the office next door, and it said Film Park Babelsberg uh, Project Ice Cream, right? So a big film studio here around the around the city uh, with a code name Project Ice Cream. I said, oh, wait, what's Project Ice Cream? Right? There's funky stuff in Berlin, so you know, let 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 me let me make sure <laughs> to understand what it is. Project Ice Cream, and it turned out that is it's uh, it's the the Matrix Matrix Four production, so everything was was basically dark, and you cannot really look uh, into the uh, in, into the windows. So um, Yes. You have to read the code, you know. You have to read the code, exactly. I, I'm not sure how I'm making now the jump into AI, but <laughs> but, but hey, <laughs> I'm just going to take your question there. <laughs> yeah, so... Take so us making the ice cream, you actually making the AI stuff here. We're you know, we making so the code. We're, yeah, exactly, <laughs> we're, we're, the content. We're, we're, we're definitely making the we're definitely making the code. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's so AI, right? We're again, you know, also also one of the values that we are providing to our clients is 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 indexing and and making sure that uh, you can take all the, the the research out of the content items, right? Out of the posters, presentations. We are trying to bring those together. Really say, all right, that was the first research output. There is a second research output. There is a third research output. So you know, we have a big data team at Morosier now that really analyzes that and we try to innovate ongoingly um, in, in that world to, to, to make sure that we can provide more and more value over time and uh, to create maybe some other glitches in the, in the metrics. <laughs> <laughs> I also understood that you have a family, a small children, and uh, it seems to be that the, 
is quite a lot of new people in the office as well. So I would assume that keeps you busy. So how, how do you have a work-life balance? Or is there such a thing? Yeah, well, I, I try to not use the word work-life balance, quite frankly. And, and I would encourage to everybody to rethink that concept of work-life balance. I find it very, very, very strange um, to not consider work part of life, right? So work-life balance is something that just from, from, from the expression, from the semantics, for me, doesn't make any sense at all. So for me, work is part of life um, and life has different uh, elements. And uh, one element in my life is, is you know, the, the company that, that we're building that I'm very passionate about. Another part of, of my life is, is my family with two kids um, that, that I'm very proud of and that I'm spending a lot of time with. Um, so all of these different different parts consist, you know, my life and then sometimes you know, the priorities <laughs> are not too clear <laughs> and, uh, you know, the time split is, is tough to manage. And, uh, um, you know, that's something that I spend a lot of time with to, to see how, how much time do I spend, spend actually working, how much time do I, um, do I spend at home, you know, and it, it is a tough, let's say, it is, it is a tough choice, if you will, to, to, to make that, um, that I'm discussing a lot, that I'm talking a lot about. So part of oh, this entrepreneurs group that where, where my wife <laughs> always say, well, that, that feels like an anonymous alcoholics group and an AA group. And, and it, and it is, I'm, you know, I'm, you talk about really deep stuff. You, you, you start to be very vulnerable, vulnerable. Um, talk about the, the, the feelings as the founders, right? The, the, the pressure that is all there, right? Because in the outside and, and towards uh, investors, towards stakeholders, you got to be that, you know, you, know, you got to be that, that very firm, that very disciplined guy that, that, you know, has one goal and, you know, we just go after that. And then uh, uh, I think the... we just shattered that just maybe 20 minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> true. Yeah, true. That one path. And then, and then once the door is closed, once the camera is off, <laughs> you'll see a little bit of tears coming up and you'll see a little bit of sadness also coming up. No, but on a serious note, I think that's part of life, right? I, I think I'm, it would be, it it would be very strange to, to say uh, we you know we we as as founders we you know humans building building companies are machines that are just you know going and and, and knowing exactly what uh, what we want to do where, where we want to go and I think that that uh, that part of 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 life where we really question our abilities where we question ourselves where we don't really know where where it goes where we really have problems in understanding you know what are the priorities currently what do i need to do all those questions they need to have a room and for every new founder out there i can just invite them to to be open about it to to talk about it to to, to be very clear that it's not everything is sunshine and butterflies flying around and the grass is green and uh, um it's 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 not how it works and i think if you don't really embrace that part as well it's going to be it's going to be tough to, to 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 stay sane on the on the long run because it is a a very fast marathon um, but it is a marathon. It's long. It's it takes time, and uh, uh, yeah, and and, and uh, there's there's a lot of you know dark sides as well where where you don't know where to go, and um, yeah, it's, it's important to talk about these as well. You said that you you found uh, really good angel investors, but you also been using or getting advice from mentors and and. In, in, in addition to, to that group, so can you can you elaborate a bit about the, the mentorship and uh, you know the ways you you you, you go about those dark nights and and doubts yeah. and, and, and and things what happen you know in any business? No, definitely, def definitely. I think I was very very lucky and I was very very fortunate uh, to have a you know large groups of of of. Uh, uh, of mentors that 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 supported me throughout my throughout my professional career um they were all individuals that uh, were first of all you know much ex more experienced than, than i am uh, they have a, a you know they they were a great uh, uh, 
a sparring partner almost in 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 all those in all those times in the very very early days and i think i didn't value that too much in the very beginning where i was still too stubborn and said well you know i'm gonna do it and they don't know what what's the right path and i'm just gonna go and and i learned very i, I learned throughout the path that um, it is important to exchange exchange with them and to be very honest also and 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 again it comes to the point of vulnerability um that uh, that 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 is that is important right i in the last two three four weeks i've had a couple of of also, you know, private, let's say, struggles where where I learned very intensively that being open with uh, with your your angels and and quite frankly, we were very we are very fortunate about our our VCs, our in, in investors, uh, absolutely brilliant brilliant folks that that we also have on 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 the board of the company, and I was very transparent about. You know where, how I feel currently, what my state of mind is, where where my, my where also my thoughts are, um, and that openness. I was obviously in the beginning when when I started to share a couple of those th- th- those thoughts and stories. I, I I didn't know if it's the right way. Sh- you know, should I communicate it? Should I talk about it? Or should I just you know pretend I'm that strong individual that you know doesn't have any any private also questions in my in my head. And and I chose the path of being very transparent and and, and, and talking about, uh, about what I have on my mind with them. And uh, e- even though it, it it felt hard, it it was a huge relief that you know they they were you know so so kind, so helpful, so you know so so, so understanding. Uh, talking with me and and you know trying to 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 give also support on a on a private side. So this this concept of having people that you can trust and that you can rely on and and that you know mentor you it turned turned out you know after you know well, let's say I realized that it is a very very important part of of, of my life and I uh, when I when I speak to to other founders they they also you know describe these the, the, the concept of having you know mentors that you're very transparent with that you're very open with as something almost um yeah almost necessary to really go through all those steps of growth all those steps of of uh, you know moving forward with with a company so I am I couldn't be happier to have such incredible group of, of of people around me that that support me um in in whatever way right be it on the business side or be it on the private side um so after all we are all humans we we have all our challenges we are we are we are, we are not just uh, machine, machines it brings me back to the matrix topic so it's, we have topics you know do you realize right france where you have you know matrix you you have also the frenchman in in, in matrix it's interesting we're all coming together <laughs> So, so, so yes. So mentorship for me is 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 a, is a huge one. Is a huge one, and I can only invite everybody to 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 make sure to to have this group of supporters um, along the way. How many years did it take you to to get that realization? You, you mentioned at the beginning. Was it after the second start, at the beginning of the third, you started to take other people's advice? Or I think it was only in the third stage. I think in the very in the in the first and the second stage, I um, let's say valued the information exchange. For me, it was simple and information. I got information out, and, and it's nice. I used them, and it's it's good. I, I benefited from it. But only in the third stage, I really saw uh, and realized that there is just a much bigger value behind this concept of mentor mentorship um, um, in there. So it was quite late. I must I, I must admit. Um, but uh, you know, better better like than 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 never. And you know, and, and another another activity that goes into that and then into that world is you know um, again that entrepreneurship um, a group of people where we meet every month and exchange about challenges, about problems that we have, about our inner feelings, and not only about challenges, right? Also about the highs, right? So it's about both, uh, talking about how exciting things are and you know how fortunate we we all are, and 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 then again there is the, the you know the dark side. So talking about both is is is, is very relevant. So how often you you communicate with your mentors and, and what is the relationship like and also can you did you mention the name of the secret AA club 
Well, you, you, yeah. The third, fourth rule was that you're never supposed to talk about it, but you know, maybe we can break that one. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you're not allowed to talk about it, so please be quiet, everybody. That <laughs> yeah, you know, this is quite small podcast, so you know, you know, no worries. <laughs> it's only going to YouTube, by the way, as well. <laughs> Very good. Well, then that's good. Good to hear. <laughs> so, so this group of people is called Entrepreneurs Organization, and. In that entrepreneurs organization, I think there's there's mainly three fundamental three fundamental rules, right? So you're you're coming up with the fourth rule. Let me just share the first the first three, and let's talk about the fourth one that later on. The the, the first rule is is uh, everything that obviously is being discussed in that uh, in in, in uh, within the, the the rooms of, of of that we call it forums um, stays in within those which 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 gives a lot of comfort to just share very very openly what you have in mind. The second question is you don't give suggestions or recommendations. There is no place of saying you should do this or you should do that. You should do that, and the reason for that is you know you suddenly switch the the levels right. The moment you give recommendations. Um, it, it has a different feeling. So never, never give recommendation. Never judge. Um, that that's the second second rule. And the third rule is never um, talk about everyone and only talk about the I perspective. Right? Very egoistically to say, I have that experience or I have that problem and I have that challenge. And these three rules taught me a lot about that concept of mentorship because that is exactly what I think in a relationship. Um, between uh, a mentor and a mentee are very important, right? You need to have that relationship of trust. That's, you know, relating to the first rule. Um, the second rule is don't talk about, you know, these crazy, uh, you know, these crazy, you should do that or you should do that, but formulate it a little bit different. You know, talk about sharing experience. I think that notion of sharing experience is very relevant. And, and don't say it always works or it never works, right? So kind of these, these, these. These, these these very you know judgmental large large frame expressions right you got to do this because everyone does that you know it doesn't really work um, doesn't really work that way yeah and the fourth rule is uh, you just mentioned it <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah. is that like a virtual thing does it happen only in Berlin is it is it uh, is there a website you know for the founders who are interested yeah, so so there's a website you you can you can just go entrepreneurs organization. It's a worldwide network, um, and how it's structured is you have chapters um, in different locations. We have a Berlin chapter here, and within the Berlin chapter, there's forums, and these forums always consist of um, I think seven to ten people or so, uh, and we meet regularly because we are all in Berlin, and it makes sense uh, to to meet uh, because there is just a much better connection that you can make, especially with those topics that we talk about. In in the last one and a half years, it was a little tricky to meet, obviously. Um, but we are, you know, we are starting to 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 meet again, and uh, it makes a huge difference um, between uh, meeting uh, offline and, and meeting virtually. Uh, but um, the concept is also that you can meet everywhere in the world, people, members from from EO, um, and and they know the set of rules, right? They they know exactly what it is all about. So suddenly you have a vast network of, of, of folks around the world that you can always meet and, and you know exactly that they have the same concept in mind when you talk about experience share and uh, and, and communicating with one another so it's a very valuable valuable way and um, you know in, in 2019 I traveled quite a bit um, I think I, I looked into the calendar lately and I, I saw 160 um, uh, days in on on the route I was really really traveling a lot and um, uh, and I met a lot of people around the world, and it gave me a great new, you know, way of thinking. It, um, I, I learned a lot through that. Uh, you know, talking again about different perspectives, giving you great ideas and great, great new thoughts. Did the 2020 non-travel policy change something in the company and personally for you? You said that uh, you were growing quite rapidly. So, was there any any sort of pivoting or anything? Any, any difficulties? A lot, a lot, I mean, a lot changed. A lot changed for me uh, personally. It ch changed a lot. I never spend that much time with the family. <laughs> that was a big one, um, and it brought me much closer to my kids, which, which, which I'm quite happy about in in, in, in that sense. And uh, it made me realize just just as how little I've just seen them before. Uh, so it was a nice 
uh, way of, of really reconnecting again. So that that's that's one big realization that um, that, that I've made from March 2020 on. So it's almost a kind of restart with uh, in the relationship with my kids. The, the second element was obviously in, in the company. We have never been a remote company. We always had our office here. And I was, I'm was i a big believer in meeting in person, right? I'm a big believer in, in really meeting and making workshops, you know, putting post-its on the wall and uh, really discussing Funny, things. I love that. <laughs> I love that, exactly. <laughs> um, uh, and, 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 and the third thing was... The way we started the company was always very much unrelated to the conference itself. We supported the conference, but we never had a software that would cover the entire conference experience. Uh, and with entire conference experience, I mean virtual conference sessions, Q&A, chat, networking sessions, and all of these elements uh, that you would basically that you would basically have. So in March 2020, or a little bit earlier, the entire team set together and said, oh, this is a huge opportunity also for us because we are already in that world. Um, we have a lot of clients that use our, 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 you know, our platform um, for their content needs. Um, so if we now step up and really crank out the virtual conference uh, uh, tools, that would make a lot of sense. And it, and it, and it did. And I must say that the, the, the team did an incredible job. It's, it's absolutely marvelous how powerful they threw everything in that bucket and, and, and really worked day and night to make things happen. Um, and it benefited the entire company. So we, based on, you know, I wouldn't call it pivot, it was definitely a step up and the communication around what we did uh, suddenly turned uh, and, and changed. So it was very much focused on that virtual and hybrid meeting that we've, that, that, that we've focused much more. And, and I think that helped the entire company very, very much. So we've created a lot of value for everyone. And, um, and I, you know, one of the, one of the reasons that I think we were also on the map for a lot of uh, VCs um, out there, we are being, you know, contacted ongoingly now, now still, still until until that day, um, and in, in in the beginning of. 2021, we got that absolutely incredible investor on board um, that uh, is the largest education technology investor in, in the world um, from the Silicon Valley. And, uh, you know, I think the, 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 the story of, of this venture round started definitely in the beginning of 2020. Did you need to just pick up the phone and uh, just uh, select the VC or did you actually need to do something? Because uh, I, <laughs> I think I, even in, in this show, we've been talking about when you already, you know, quite well uh, with your business, it, it turns the table the other way around. It, uh, the VCs start to call you and, and offer, offer good terms because they want to get in. And, and you're like, okay, we, we don't need the money, but, uh, well, we can discuss. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it, and it definitely turned out. And it, and it, it was a yet another realization, right? It turned my thinking upside down. Because before 2021, quite frankly, I had a big struggle to really make people or make people understand what we do and, and web summit again <laughs> web summit again it is it is exactly that it was a web summit too <laughs> part, part, part two is that like a horror series you know <laughs> hopefully there's not like a third episode coming up <laughs> so nothing against web summit but for me that is definitely definitely the uh, the the, the perfect storm. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. No, so our two venture rounds, I um, it, it was tough to get to get uh, to, to to get venture capital money, and and I'm so happy to have you know these these great funds that believed in us uh, in 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 these times where it was really a com complex problem that we were solving. I think it was still very much appealing to a lot of VCs. So we've had a lot of great conversations and we also had several offers on the table for every of the venture rounds. Um, but it, it, it's not an, a trivial problem. It's not a, it's a non-obvious challenge that, that we have. You know, it's not um, bringing, you know, within 10 minutes uh, grocery to the, to the store, which I benefit from and I use very often. Uh, but it is not as easy explainable as as that right so you know you need an entire right you need the ears from the vcs to really listen to you and 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 really understand so you, you got to meet that partner 
on the VC, uh, on the other table that really understand and really tries to understand and believe in. Uh, we have um, on the first two VCs really these partners that um, that listened to me and that understood the, 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 the crazy potential and the crazy opportunity that we are looking into. And uh, you're right, in 2021, so this, this last funding, everything turned upside down. So we've had a lot of um, activities, a lot of um, VCs were contacting me we've, uh, or us. We, we've had uh, great, great opportunities on the table. We've, uh, we've had great offers on the table that we needed to, to, to then choose who do we think um, suits best for us and, and uh, we choose our ventures there and we're very very happy about that decision that we've made you mentioned once um now i'm just thinking that the perfect storm but you were also driving with the convertible in a, in a snowstorm <laughs> uh, was it before or after you were also sealing a deal <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was 2009 maybe two anecdotes and and it comes a little bit before i talk about these anecdotes it comes a little bit from from the studies that i had i was fascinated by this one course at university and it, it was a course that i had in in, in, in france called marketing mod postmodern sensoriel et experimental or something like that and again france yeah so it's it's a topic i think when, when we name this 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 series it, it got to be some sort of some some french <laughs> french name french fun <laughs> french fun exactly <laughs> <laughs> so so this course was brilliant because the idea of the course is was about uh, marketing concepts that would just uh, not be a you know <laughs> um, uh, crazy and great great clickbaiting headline, but but we're playing with all those different sensors, right? So the biggest example would be uh, something like Abercrombie and Fitch, right? So you know you could smell them from three blocks away. Uh, they have these party atmosphere in those big stores, um, and 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 the and the final presentation at 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 the school was actually in a shopping mall. In a shopping mall at I think 11 p.m. or something like that, where we presented our ideas on uh, a little bit of a different kind of marketing, and that idea stuck with me all the time on on how you need to put yourself into different um, settings, if you will, uh, to to have a much different uh, different thought process. Now, for someone that comes from Berlin, you, you know they're, 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 you, you could have now different hypotheses what that different state of mind is. But I don't want to go down that path. That could be, you know, part three of our podcast series. <laughs> um, but uh, um, when I when I talk about these, is is always different different moments in life that are just so crazy that they give you a completely different perspective. And one of those those stories that you were alluding to is I um, in 2019, in the end of 2019, in winter or so, yeah, in, in winter, I was in, in Boston and I needed to take a very, very quick meeting in, in, in New York. So I, I flew over and it was a crazy uh, storm, w w you know, wind, winter winter storm and uh, um, the snowstorm. It, it was it was snowing crazy and the, the wind was, was was also brutal. And when I landed in, in, in New York, I think it was one of the last flights that actually landed in, in, in New York. So I had my, my couple of meetings there in, in New York, um, but the flight back was canceled. So... That was back then. It was you know one of the you know one, one the the first time I was in in winter in 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 <laughs> on the east coast, <laughs> and and I didn't realize that it's quite quite a you know, it, it is quite cold. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very cold, <laughs> and um, and so I I chose right as a proper European. I'm choosing. Um, is there a train? Uh, well, Americans and trains are, have a, uh, um, let's say, a, a, an interesting relationship. I um, looked at buses. All the buses were, were sold out. So I said, well, the last option that uh, this for me is, is is renting out a car. So I went to the car rental and uh, they said, well, yes, we have one car left. You, you got lucky. And I didn't even care what car it was. I just needed to go back from New York to Boston. It's just what is it four hour four hour drive or five hour drive maybe so i took the keys went to the car and it was a white ford mustang convertible 
that they got me there in the middle of winter. So I went into that car and it was almost that American story, right? That typical uh, US American story in that loud Ford Mustang. And I needed to have a couple of more, more calls as well. And it was very tough to really have proper calls in that uh, in, in that drive from, from New York on Boston. I, I met it on time. <laughs> That's good. But uh, it gave me yet other perspectives of, of, of life and then uh, created great, great moments of, of creativity. What is your favorite word? What is my favorite word? I would say my favorite word is uh, extraordinary. I like that. Extraordinary. What is your least favorite word? Uh, my least favorite word would be maybe concern Con yeah concern is it i don't like that what turns you on creatively spiritually or emotionally mm, so i'm a i'm a big fan of of um of classical music and um and and, and opera so i'm i'm always in in, in august at the salzburger festspiele and so on so i love opera opera and gives me always the, you know the nice goosebumps and it really is a great moment for me what turns you off um, I would say every sort of negativism, everything of, uh, every, every time when, when people start is it's not going to work, um, that turns me off. And here we go again. What is your favorite curse word? Ah, uh, yeah, that, uh, I, I, I'm using a lot of them. You know, my, my son and my daughter are always saying, don't use that word. But I think my most favorite is, is the, the German word for, uh, or the German word Scheiße. <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? Oh, a lot. A lot. I, I, sounds, sounds are, are wonderful. Yeah, so, um, you know the, the, the sound of, of, of uh, in, you know when you're in a harbor and then there's the sailing boats and, and all the you know, all the sails are and, and when, when it's windy I, I love that sound or the sound of a, you know of a coca-cola can it just pops open right the, ah that's brilliant that's brilliant yeah I, I could come up with more <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate um Mm -hmm. the sound in a silent room when there's a clock ticking very loudly uh, uh, absolutely annoying and the second sound that i really hate is every ad ad uh, funded ad ad featured uh, radio station or 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 or, or uh, television station sorry did i say something wrong here for you <laughs> <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt i think that the, the, this the, the the this this world of 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 art is is really something very very in, in, in inspiring for me so i talked about opera earlier so you know conductor or or uh, you know, or producer of opera festivals or something like that would be absolutely wonderful uh or creating these art installations right so the, i love these uh, i love everything that that inspire that, that inspires me and that's something that i would have loved to, to do as well what profession would you not like to do <laughs> very clearly banker <laughs> 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 that that's straight that's easy <laughs> that's easy <laughs> But you know, everybody that is a banker, everybody they're doing a wonderful job. I I just couldn't. <laughs> if you could be a co-founder of any startup in any era, which one would you choose? Are you referring to topic or to really the startup? Uh, you can define the question how you like, but basically you could you could name a company or you, you could say that I would love to be the co-founder of that of that one or yeah. it can be so so as as I as I talked to you earlier about it, uh, for me education is a very big topic, right? I'm spending a lot of time thinking and and, and uh, thinking about education. I'm in a couple of groups that um, you know that where we think about the future of education because I think our system is absolutely broken, and that's why I feel that the the the, the startups or I would you know startups in that education sector that are really in that educational world. Um, that are shaping up educational systems are, are brilliant, right? So you know the 
the early ones would have been Audacity or, or Coursera or, you know, th these, these guys, they, they were, you know, a good starting point into a complete new waves of education technology startups. And I think that that is a topic that will, uh, will grow over, over you know, even, even more um, also in, within the pandemic, it just grew massively. So education is, is a big one. I hear like the fourth states coming up soon. <laughs> the, the, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to let, let's talk about that in a year or two. You know, let's see where my mental state is there. Uh, so far, the third one is working very, very well, but there will definitely at some point be a fourth stage. Yeah. Unfortunately for you, uh, we are in the end of the episode. So, you know, you, you, you <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you st <laughs> but you still have a chance to have um, a final word for the audience, whatever you yeah. want to say. No, no. Th thank you, thank you very much. So, first of all, thank you for you. This this has been a very nice, nice conversation, uh, and uh, I I think that um, you 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 know you, you made some provocative uh, questions that I that I liked and um, made me think about kind of the entire you know the entire journey. So I'm just maybe inviting everybody that has an exciting have an exciting story to to tell to really tell it out loud and so that everybody else uh, you know gets gets inspired because that learning path. Um, when you learn together, uh, it, it makes makes things easier. Uh, and if you're not only by yourself, so I think that's that's my biggest take on that. It stays in my head now after after our wonderful conversation here. Thank you so much. This has been so thrilling. Hope you enjoyed as well uh, as an audience. And uh, I guess it's goodbye for now. And <laughs> till next time. Thank you very much. And au revoir, right? So that is the, the, the French uh, the French goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. The final <laughs> French word. <laughs> <laughs>